Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's do our next example where we don't draw a picture of what's going on, but we should be able to figure out the line integral. So here we have a line integral which is defined as y squared dx plus x dy, where we have two different curves. So we're going to do the, the problem two times, and in this example we'll use curve C1. In the next video we'll use curve C2. Notice that C1 is a straight line from the point minus 5, minus 3 to the point 0, 2. The next time, on the next example, we'll use a parabola. Again, we start from the same point and end at the same point, so this is taking two different paths, so we should get two different answers, because typically when we overlay a different curve on top of an equation, we'll end up with a different result. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to come up with some parametric equations. So if we realize that for x, when we take, take a look at the x variable, we can see that we go from a minus 5 to a 0. So how can we come up with an equation to describe that? Well, we can say that x is equal to 5 times t minus 5. The reason why I want to write it like this is because I want to have the limits for t to go from 0 less than equal to t, less than equal to 1. So if I want to take a variable that only changes by 1, when my original variable changes by 5, of course I can see that x equals 5 times t, because the change in x is 5 times as big as the change in t. But when t is equal to 0, x is minus 5, so I need a minus 5 there. So that is a good transformation from the variable x to the parametric variable t. We can do the same for y y will change from a minus 3 to a plus 2. Again, that's a change of 5, which means when t changes 1, y changes by 5, so I have y is equal to 5 times t, but when t is equal to 0, y should be negative 3, so I subtract 3 from that. So I can convert my x to t like this, and my y to t like this, assuming, again, that 0 is less than equal to t, is less than equal to 1. So now I have a conversion for my, parametric, for my x and y to my parametric variable t. I also want to find a dx and a dy, so I can say that dx dt is going to be equal to 5, which means that dx is equal to 5 times dt, and dy dt can also be written to be equal to 5, so therefore my dy can be replaced by 5 dt. So now we can see that this equation right here can be, or this integral right here, can be converted to an integral I can actually um, integrate using a parametric, uh, uh, parametric conversion. So this can now be written as the integral from 0 to 1, because that's the variable t, the limits for variable t, of y squared, that would be the quantity 5t minus 3 squared times dx, and dx is equal to 5dt times 5dt. I'll separate this with a second integral plus an integral from 0 to 1 of x, and x is 5t minus 5, and dy is going to be 5dt. So simplifying this a little bit and pulling out the 5, so this can be written as 5 times the integral of 25t squared, twice the product, that would be minus 30t plus 9, times dt from 0 to 1, plus 5 times the integral from 0 to 1 of 5t minus 5 times dt. And now I'm ready to go ahead and integrate that. That's relatively simple. So this is equal to 5 times. That would be 25t cubed over 3 minus 30t squared over 2 plus 9t evaluated from 0 to 1. And then plus 5 times. That would be 5t squared over 2 minus 5t again from 0 to 1. And you can see then, of course, that if I plug in the lower limits, everything will go to zero, so I only have to plug in the upper limit and add everything up. So this is equal to five times, I'm going to pull out a five here from both, 
And then here, when I plug in an upper a 1, I get 25 divided by 3. Plug in a 1 here, I get minus 30 divided by 2, which is minus 15. And here I get plus 9. And here I will get uh, 5 halves times 1, which would be plus 2.5. And here that would be minus 5. All right. And everything multiplied times 5. So let's see here. What do we have? Uh, this is equal to 5 times minus 15 plus 9 is a minus 6. Minus 5 is a minus 11. Plus 2 is a minus 9. Plus I have is minus 8.5. So we end up with 25 over 3 minus 8.5. Okay. So now this is equal to 5 times. That's 8 and a third. So it would be 8 plus 1 third minus 8 minus a half. The 8 cancel out. So I end up with this is equal to 5 times 1 third minus a half, which is equal to 5 times 2 sixths minus 3 sixths, which is equal to minus 1 six times 5 or minus 5 over 6. And that is the result of that particular integral. Again, we start out with an integral that had y squared dx plus x dy. We had to integrate using the curve c1, where c1 was a straight line from minus 5 to minus 5 minus 3 to 0, 2. Our x therefore changes from minus 5 to 0, and our y changes from minus 3 to 2. So we want to convert x and y to a parametric equation using t. Since the slope of the line or not really the slope of the line, yes, in the way it is, but the way I want to look at it is that if t can only vary from 0 to 1 and x varies from minus 5 to 0, that's a change of 5 converted to a change of 1, so we write x equals 5t, but when t is equal to 0, x is minus 5, so we need a minus 5 there. We do the same for y. Again, the change in y is 5. We want the change in t to be 1, so y equals to 5t, but when t is equal to 0, y is minus 3. So that's how we get our parametric equations. That's usually the toughest part of the problem. Once we have that, we can solve for the dx dt's and dy dt's, plug everything into the equation, and then integrate using the limits for t from 0 to 1. And that's how it's done.